Well, this is uh, my current uh, LotBot base project. Um, you can see the processor in the center is the uh, uh, Black Pill. It's the STM32, and the reason it's called the Black Pill, of course, it's is painted black. In the original um, uh, LotBot base project, um, I was using an STM32 that was painted blue, and it's called the Blue Pill. The original um, LotBot base project uh, looks uh, more like this. It's much more confusing, um, and it's the subject of a, another video that I have called the LotBot base project that's on my YouTube channel, LotBot Robotics. Now, um, each of the components of um, the original LotBot base project is also the subject of another video. So, for example, when I uh, took the two receivers, uh, which were eight channels each, and used them as a single 16-channel uh, receiver, uh, that is all, that's in a video. When I discuss the display uh, and how it was used in the wiring, it was also in another video, and so on. Uh, so. I'm not really going to look anymore at this uh, older version of the LotBot base project. I want to look at the newer version of the LotBot base project. Um, the other one, you saw all the wires, and um, what I did on this one was to uh, um, take some long pin headers put them into just a prototyping board and sort of using um, the, the breadboard technology where you take the male pins and put them into the breadboard. I um, use the pins for the long pin headers and use female um, uh, pins, connector pins, to uh, combine, uh, connect the different um, uh, modules on this. Now, uh, oh, and then of course the box I printed on a PC on a um, 3D printer. Now let me just show you uh, a little bit of information about why I picked this particular processor. Uh, well, I want to take a look at the um, boards that I went through um, to decide uh, what I would end up with, and of course in the original. Um, LotBot based project, I was using this one. And uh, this one has 64 kilobytes of flash memory and 20 kilobytes of RAM memory, and it runs at 72 megahertz. Now, the problem is that I was really running out of uh, memory, and uh, I really needed to be able to put in bigger uh, sketches in the uh, uh, STM32. So I start looking around for other STM32s. This, uh, as you can see, is uh, blue and it, uh, it is known in the uh, literature and uh, as the blue pill. Uh, this one is the same exact uh, uh, STM32 uh, and it's called the uh, F103C8T6. Both of these are that chip this chip right here. And uh, they both are 64 um, kilobytes. This one is uh, sort of a mini, it's much smaller than this. You can't replace uh, uh, it exactly in any board because of the size. Uh, but however, um, if you change the C8T6 to a CBBT6, which is this chip, uh, then you pick up uh, um, you pick up 128 kilobytes. Uh, you still get 20 kilobytes of RAM, and it still runs at 72 megahertz. So these three, uh, these two are at 64 um, kilobytes of flash, and this one is at 128 kilobytes of flash, and all three of them just have 20 kilobytes of RAM. Now. This one over here, this is uh, called a, a Maple Mini. And uh, considering this is the black pills, 
and this is a blue pill. I was wondering why somebody doesn't call this thing the green pill, but uh, that's not in the literature. Um, also, this one has the uh, chip on the other side of the board. Um, it has, um, uh, it uses the uh, F103 CBT6, just like uh, this black pill does. Uh, so there's really no advantage over it. It does have the same 128 kilobytes of uh, uh, flash. Now, I start getting interested in the uh, F4s over here uh, just to, when this F3 came in, so I never even took it out of the package. But uh, this F4, this is an F4 01CCU6, uh, uh, and uh, it's actually one of the early F401 boards, and from the literature on the internet, at least, it doesn't seem to have been adopted very well. Whereas this one is an F401 uh, that seems to be the current uh, F-401 that's being used as a black pill. Um, and this one is the biggest guy of them all. Uh, this is a F-411 CEU-6. Uh, these two are currently in the literature called a black pill. And this one has 512 kilobytes of flash. This one has uh, 256 kilobytes of flash. This has 128 kilobytes of RAM, and this has 64 kilobytes of RAM. This one operates at 84 megahertz, and this one operates at 100 megahertz. So I'm testing with both of these, but this is the one that I'm going to end up using. Um, anyway, that's some of the boards I went through, and uh, the, uh, the actual data uh, related to the memory and speed are what I've picked up on the internet and may not be accurate, so I can't uh, guarantee it. Uh, and I'm sure that there's other boards out there that you could be looking at, but right now, for what I'm doing, I've chosen uh, this uh, STM, um, uh, F, STM32 F411 CEU6 uh, with 512 kilobytes of uh, flash, 128 kilobytes of RAM, and runs at 100 megahertz. One, one other thing that you might uh, be interested in having is if you're looking at these chips uh, very often, it's very hard to see them and you really need to have a nice magnifying glass with uh, some lights and maybe even an additional flashlight. Well, I need to um, look at the uh, Adreno ID and the code for just a little bit. Um, when you come up to the uh, tools menu, uh, you come down and, of course, you set the series to the series you're using. In this case, it's the STM32F4, as opposed to before I was using the uh, blue pill, which was an STM32F1. Uh, and then uh, the part number, uh, or board number, rather, is the uh, black pill itself. And I am using an F411CE. Uh, I think it's a CEU6. Um, and uh, you're going uh, serial. And the other thing you need to do for the black pill is to install an STM32 cube programmer to do the uh, upload uh, to the board itself, to the STM32 itself. And we're going to be doing this serial. So you see it's uh, selected as serial over here. Okay. The, before we actually show the output of the compile, I uh, just want to mention one thing is that the uh, blue pill, uh, I was using a, um, uh, a, a pin B11, which doesn't exist on the black pill. So I had to change uh, that pin. Um, I had to wire in the PA3 instead of the PB11 that was on the blue pill. Uh, that is... Uh, the only change that I can th uh, th think of um, hardware-wise or actually in the code, the code works except for that. Okay, um, when we do the compile, uh, we get these two white lines here, which shows the, uh, the, uh, the size of the flash memory, which is 512K bytes. And of course, the K is 1,024, so it looks like 5,000, I mean, 524,288 
it, uh, you don't see 512. Even if you look over here, you do see the flash size is 512 uh, kilobytes. And the same holds true with RAM, which is 128 kilobytes. Um, if I come back over here, you see the device name is the STM32 uh, F4E11. Um, and the flash size, again, was 512. If I go further on down, this is where it's uh, erasing the memory and then it's downloading the, the uh, compiled code and then operating the, um, uh, the STM32 to run this particular sketch. Okay, we'll just uh, take a look at uh, a little bit of the uh, uh, STM32 and the uh, LotBot base project uh, showing a couple things it can do. Okay, this is the um, the current version of the uh, LotBot base project and all of the functions that I could do and you can see on this display uh, can be seen in the uh, previous video, the LotBot base project overview. It's on my uh, channel, LotBot uh, uh, Robotics. Uh, I could, I could just, the upper, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but um, uh, in order to show you all this, I, I'm not getting too close to it, but the uh, screen on the upper left-hand corner shows the uh, gimbal as being all the way down, and then I move it all the way up, and the uh, limits of the gimbal have already been set. So as long as I have it on the set function, which you uh, were able to see in my previous video, um, it only goes from 1,000 to 2,000. Um, anyway, the, all the functions that's here, you can see in the previous video, so I'm not gonna go through any of that. Uh, I'm really just trying to show you that this is set up and it works like the other one did. However, if you're using this as a drone or a, a robot, you certainly aren't gonna be connected to the computer uh, for the whole time, so I'm going to disconnect that. And for that matter, if you are in a drone, or a robot. You don't really even need this uh, USB um, uh, link uh, to the STM32. So we can just remove it. And since it's on header, uh, it's not really needed. However, you still need power. So I have this uh, LiPo battery and uh, I'm going to put my little LiPo uh, XT60 uh, switch in that I created and I documented it in a follow-up uh, video to the uh, overview. And uh, I just uh, put a couple uh, um, uh, cables that I would use in a uh, breadboard uh, together with the XT60. Uh, and I'm going to put it onto here. And I'm going to plug this in over here. Uh, I put a little it's hard to see, but I put a little red mark there showing uh, where the um, uh, power would go. And then of course the uh, ground will go in the other one. Uh, right there. Okay, they're both in there seated well. So if I turn on the switch, then we should see the uh, function work again. And um, Uh, okay, so now you see the uh, little screen has data coming in from the transmitter and uh, it's being powered uh, by a LiPo battery. So one could take this arrangement, put it into a drone or put it into a, uh, a robot and, and uh, uh, with the right code in here, you could do all sorts of things. I took the... Uh, old version of the uh, LotBot base project that was uh, built on the breadboard. And I replaced it with this uh, newer version that I just uh, discussed. And I uh, hooked up the wires uh, uh, on this uh, drone platform. And um, I just want to show you that uh, the um, motors still work uh, on this project. So um, everything still works. Um, 
The only thing that uh, is pretty obvious that uh, for a drone, this uh, high uh, platform of the lot-based lot project is uh, kind of awkward and it should be more flattened. For a uh, robot, it would, be, uh, it would work well. So I need to do a little bit more work on this. Uh, I was mainly interested in the uh, migration of uh, what was necessary to go from a, a blue pill to a black pill. And uh, that I did, and now I have a lot more power and a lot more uh, uh, flash memory and RAM to actually put some code together to see how much further I can go. Uh, anyway, that's my project, and uh, thanks for watching.